Now that we have a basic idea of how we want to break down our materials, we can start planning the actual modeling. If you are working from very detailed blueprints or orthos, this step might be unnecessary, but in this case I'm building the structure from a single view, so it's worth taking a second to break down the main forms. Now I prefer doing this planning in Photoshop since it's easy to sketch directly over your concept or reference on another layer. I'm going to use a red brush, but if you aren't comfortable with sketching in Photoshop or you don't have a tablet, you can go ahead and use the regular line tool, which will actually give you cleaner results, but in this case, it's just for planning, so it doesn't really matter. The first thing I want to identify is the core structure and shape of this building. In this case, it looks like a series of hexagonal objects tapering at different degrees. From this angle, it's not very obvious if this is a hexagon, but it's okay to make these decisions on your own as long as it keeps the essence of the original concept. I think there's a misconception with game art that you shouldn't deviate from the original concept at all. In my experience, it's the exact opposite. With Guild Wars, it was very rare that we actually stuck to the concept one-to-one. -one. When looking at something in a fully three-dimensional space, certain changes and deviations are often necessary, and you shouldn't be afraid to try them. I mean, the, the worst thing that could happen is you show your art director, he spits coffee out of his nose and fires you, but I'm pretty sure that's an extreme example. More often than not, he either says, that's great, or let's go back to the original, so it's not too risky. Here I'm also planning out the entrance corridor and the side wings of the structure. Now for this bunker-like base, it appears to be a tapered cylinder that is cut at an angle so that the top flows towards the entrance. Next, I'm going to extend the canvas with the crop tool and do some quick top-down sketches so that when I bring this into the max, I can see the whole layout. I'll make a couple quick notes so that I know where the front is, and then I'll scale and move this planning sketch into the upper left corner of the actual concept. This way I can import just one image, and it contains both the concept and the planning sketches. Now, I admit this is a little bit more than I would normally plan out, but I think it's good to think about if you haven't made many structures or buildings before. Looking at an empty max scene is really intimidating for beginners, and this planning will help you get things started more quickly. Next, I'll check the image size and make sure it's not something unnecessarily large. In this case, it's 1400 pixels wide, which I think will be fine, and then I'll save this as a JPEG. Next, I'm going to jump over to 3D Max and set up my reference plane. I'm going to create the plane in my front viewport at roughly the same dimensions of the image. For instance, the JPEG was around 1400 by 790 pixels, so I can make this 140 by 79 to make things a little easier. Now, I'm just going to switch my view to perspective and browse to where I saved the image and drag and drop it into the plane. If you're working on one single monitor like I am, it's a little annoying because you have to minimize your viewports and arrange your windows so that you see the max file and your Windows Navigator at the same time. Then you just drag the JPEG onto your plane, and voila, it should show up if you did everything correctly. And now you're ready to start blocking in your model.